So I have a story about better help. Basically, I was feeling pretty bummed and I thought to myself, you know, it's time for a change. It's time for me to be vulnerable and open up and it's time for me to find someone who can help me. So I downloaded the app, filled out their little form with all my preferences and I got matched with a therapist and scheduled a time to meet her. And then she ghosted me. I sat there for probably 10 or 15 minutes and my therapist never showed up. So I wrote a little message to her. She eventually got back to me, told me she was busy with something else and that she'd accidentally forgotten our meeting and asked me to reschedule for another time, which I did. And then she ghosted me again. And that genuinely set my mental health back a decent amount. I was like, dude, I came here to try and work through my trauma, and instead you just gave me a new trauma. I've been reluctant to go to therapy my whole life, and here I was, finally willing to show up and wanting to improve myself, and I was at the door, and I knocked on the door, and the person on the other side of the door was like, go fuck yourself. The stress of my modern office has caused me to go into a depression. Depression? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? The stress of my modern office has caused me to go into a depression. After that experience, I'm now genuinely more hesitant to try therapy again just because of that first bad experience. I know the odds of my second therapist ghosting me are very, very low, but it's still a hurdle that I'm not willing to go through. Anyway, the point of this video isn't to talk about my own trauma with BetterHelp, but to talk about BetterHelp as a company. I'm sure you guys have heard of BetterHelp. They sponsor basically every podcast in existence. And their whole shtick is that they provide online therapy that's cheaper than traditional therapy. But I think there's more that lies beneath the surface than this noble mission that they proclaim to have. I do think there are some pros to BetterHelp. They make therapy more affordable and accessible to the average person. But I do think there are also some cons. To kind of explain that, I want to talk about how BetterHelp achieves their goal of providing cheap online therapy. The online part is pretty simple to explain, they just built an online platform for therapy. And traditional therapists that normally meet in person are also using this method. The other thing BetterHelp says they do is make therapy cheap. And if we can go back to uh, AP Macroeconomics for a second, I think the way they do this is by increasing the supply of therapists. In the same way Uber in its early days recruited people who weren't professional taxi drivers but knew how to drive to drive cars for them, BetterHelp seems to recruit people who aren't full-time therapists but have the qualifications to give therapy to work on their platform. Anecdotally, this seems to lead to a lower quality of average therapist than traditional therapy. When I was on BetterHelp looking for therapists, I would Google slash LinkedIn stalk them and from what I saw, there were some professional therapists but also a lot of school guidance counselors or life coaches who weren't full-time therapists. The argument might go that BetterHelp can't screen every person that signs up to give therapy on their platform. And if you have the right acronyms or letters or qualifications, BetterHelp has no reason to suspect that you can't give good therapy. But I think the fact that BetterHelp can't individually screen every therapist shouldn't be given as an excuse, but should be thought of as a real problem. It should be cause for concern for BetterHelp that they don't have an effective system for getting rid of bad Apple therapists before they do damage to real people. I think playing with people's mental health in this way is a very slippery slope to go down. Another problem I see with BetterHelp is that they seem to massively underpay therapists. If you're paying less for therapy, there's just less money to go around to pay your actual therapist, especially when BetterHelp takes a cut as a middleman. I think underpaying people who work on the platform is another reason why the quality of therapist seems to be lower on BetterHelp. If I was a therapist and went to years of really expensive medical school, I would want to go somewhere where I could get paid the most. 
not this online platform that seems to really underpay me. The cost of therapy isn't just the time that the person is sitting there with you, it also accounts for all the time it took that therapist to learn how to treat you. Now, I'm not saying therapy needs to be or should be that expensive. It should be really affordable. But BetterHelp seems to be a shortcut to that affordability instead of a real permanent solution. And let's get one thing straight. BetterHelp's main goal is to make as much money as possible. And I'm not saying that a for-profit company can't genuinely do good things in the world. But BetterHelp is owned by a publicly traded company. And they need to report revenues and earnings to shareholders. And their goal is to get those numbers as high as possible. I don't doubt that BetterHelp has really helped a lot of people. I'm sure there are a lot of nice people that work at BetterHelp. And some of them, or even a lot of them, really want to help people. But again, their main objective is to make money. The idea of providing affordable, accessible mental health resources is really noble. And maybe that's why BetterHelp has dodged so much criticism and every podcast seems to be willing to be sponsored by them. But if I'm being honest, I'm not so sure about BetterHelp. The end game of BetterHelp seems to be giving to therapists the same dystopia that has befallen taxi drivers and delivery drivers courtesy of Uber and DoorDash and other companies. Create a gig economy where you can undercut and maybe even one day eliminate traditional therapists, and then, when that's all said and done, reap the rewards by underpaying your workers and overcharging your users. The fact that BetterHelp in its current form even exists seems to me to be a symptom of the massive failure of our current healthcare system, where mental health resources are far out of reach for most people and only the wealthy can afford good treatment. Of course, these are all just my random thoughts and I don't have any, you know, super deep intel at the inner workings of the company, but I do see this possibly not ending super great. Hopefully you guys are taking care of yourselves. I know mental health is a really big problem in our society today and you guys Hopefully have people that you could reach out to and talk to or ways that you can understand the world better and hopefully work through your own emotions better. If you guys ever want, you guys can feel free to slide into my DMs. Hopefully I have the time to get back to you guys and talk about it. But yeah, man, the world is crazy. We're all just trying to make our way through it. And these are just my random thoughts on the internet. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay sane. Peace.